Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be in the vastness of space. This is Rock and Larry Locking with Pleiadian Talk with my co-host Michelle Walling in Texas. Today we are thrilled to have with us Greg Prescott of N5D.com, who has written a very important article about a wake-up call to humanity called Confirmed by Two Sources. This is our last chance. This article has undoubtedly caused some controversy in spiritual circles, so we decided to have a show today around the premise of the article along with the way Greg's information came to him on or in order to be shared. So, Michelle, how are you? Hi, Larry. I'm doing great. Thanks for having another impromptu session of Pleiadian Talk. And I'm really excited today to bring on my partner, Greg Prescott. Greg Prescott, welcome. Thanks, welcome, guys. Greg. Great to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. Yes. Well, we've we've had a lot of... Uh, a lot of information come to us, a lot of confirmation, and a lot of uh, people who are a little fearful and confused about an article that you wrote. So I'm really excited to get into discussing this article. And I know that today um, you went to the dog park and you have mm -hmm. some new information to share with the, the listeners today. So the article that you wrote is called Confirmed by Two Sources. This is our last chance. It's now or never. And basically, you were led. Uh, by a series of events of uh, synchronicities uh, where two different people told you uh, the same thing and you had not um, they had not met each other so why don't you give us a little explanation of how you you came to write this article well you hit the nail on the head right there um, these two people that I met one is a very successful businessman um, very wealthy has no ulterior motive in telling me anything other than what he's been channeling and what's in humanity's best interest. And the other one is a woman I met at the dog park um, who just recently got her abilities back. So when they both started telling me the same story without knowing each other, we all know that there's no such thing as coincidences. And maybe one or two things might be the same, and that might be a coincidence, but everything they told me is identical. The story is identical. And... Uh, it's a little bit scary for some people who don't understand what's happening, and I think that's what's what's going on. People, peop, are, are we still on? Mm-hmm. Okay. I yes, just, we're still here. I hear a delay going on right now. Okay. Did, I'm sorry. Did you turn your volume down? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I see what happened is uh, YouTube is on. I had the okay. YouTube uh, link open. Anyway, so getting back to what I was saying before, it's more than just a coincidence when uh, two people have the same identical story. So basically, what I learned is that for some people, this is their last incarnation. And th those are only the people who are not spiritually progressing. Now, this is the clarification I got today. Um, you know, even if you're progressing slowly, even if you're just treading water, you're okay. It's those people who are regressing as souls who will live out their life here, and that'll be it. There is no more returning to source. They're just going to be reconstituted, I guess, their souls. And I know a lot of people are having a big issue with this. What do you mean? How do you not go back? How does the soul disappear? Well, I, I can't answer how, what, and why, but it's my belief that it'll just go into basically stardust, and you'll be starting over again. We've Both sources have said we have lived, everybody here has lived thousands of lives, and uh, we've had numerous opportunities, many opportunities, to keep progressing spiritually, if nothing else, just treading water. But some people are just not getting it, and uh, this is an opportunity for them. And I know I've put this question out there to so many people, and I already know you, your answers, but I'll ask you guys anyway. If you knew what I knew, would you just sit on this information, or would you try to help as many people as possible? Mm -hmm. I'll ask you Absolutely. guys, what would you do? 
Yeah, Greg, I would. I'd absolutely do what you're doing, and I think it's wonderful. I don't think really there's any other option. Like I was saying, I think last night to you in the chat room, it, you'd almost be negligent not to. I mean, you have to get this information out there, and I would just encourage people: don't shoot the messenger. I mean, this is a message, and there is no, there are no coincidences, and this is very real, and it's obviously for a reason. Um, you know, we're we're not just coming on here to talk about this for something to do. So yeah, I would do the same thing that you're doing and just try to roll with the punches and deal with the criticism as best we can and try to educate. You know, Michelle. Well, the way I work is um, information is brought to me, and then I, um, I, you know, if it resonates with me, I usually end up getting some kind of confirmation, and I'm usually led by my guides, and it's usually on the internet, and it's us usually in writing, something that I can actually read. And in this case, when you told me about this, um, not only did I find the um, the exact same thing that you said in the book Urantia, but I also found it on another source today this morning. And it just seemed like, you know, if I ask for confirmation, even though I know, I feel it in my heart that it's true, uh, it just comes, it's, it's amazing how, synchronistic, how synchronistically it comes to me. You know, I think we've all heard about this through Dolores Cannon's work where she said the earth was going to split into two earths. And, you know, Sometimes when you read something, you get different layers of information based on your current uh, knowledge and based on where you are on your spiritual path. I mean, if I were to go back and read those books again, it might very well just say uh, what was going to happen to those souls that didn't make it. And I just didn't catch it because I wasn't ready for it. But I know now that, yes, we definitely have had um, a, lot, a lot of chances um, to you know to at least make some spiritual progression and in some in very many cases a lot of souls here on earth did not make any progression and actually regressed and the whole plan if people just would remember this the plan it, it's been said in very in a lot of different ways just like everything's been said in different ways and all the various ways of the Bible but if, if you really get down to the nitty-gritty in the Bible, it says that uh, the, the main thing of the Bible is really not to look outside of yourself, but to go within. Well, it's about the same thing with this. Uh, it is the split of the two earths, which is just a different way of saying that the vibrations will uh, of the people will split into the law of resonance of vibration. Um, we're raising our vibration in order to to separate ourselves from the lower vibrational entities on this planet that are controlling us and out of our free will this is our exit plan this is how we exit the matrix and um, so yeah if I you know when you when you told me about this information I had a very strong deep desire to get the information out as soon as possible and we've had over a thousand YouTube hits on the video that Larry and I did about your article and then you, you released your article last night. So we had the, the show, I don't know, a couple of days ago, and then you released your article. Uh, and it's the YouTube is actually embedded in your article if, uh, if our listeners need to, to read that, to listen to that. So, I, of course, we I feel like um, that we are on a mission here as light warriors to spread information and we are just messengers and when we get confirmation from several sources it's our job to spread it and I think that when people read an article and um, the, the reason that we're mentioning this is there's you know these people um, that really want to argue this point on Facebook and say no you can't you, you know um, we've we know that energy doesn't die and so therefore, you know, the souls just can't go to stardust. Well, I'm sorry, that's a little immature way of looking at the fact that stardust is energy. So we're not saying that the energy dies. We're just saying that the energy changes form and doesn't have personality. And so what we, what we want to do is we just want to put the information out there and let people, let it resonate with themselves. And if they experience any fear 
with what we are saying, it may actually be a blessing in disguise because you know it may actually be bringing up the last vestiges of fear that they have inside of themselves that need to be transmuted because I guarantee you when something occurs on this planet you cannot take fear with you if you have fear within your body it is not going to withstand any kind of light or any kind of vibration that is going to raise the vibration of the planet and or raise your vibration to where you need to be to another dimension however you want to look at it so um, I I think that in order to help people you had to put this article out and unfortunately it did um, you know people said that there was um, a lot of fear that we were fear mongers to begin with and if anybody has read any of our articles or listened to Larry on the radio or um, you know looked at the things on N5D we're, we're information gatherers and we dispel information as we feel like we need to do and we leave it up to the readers and the listeners to use their own discernment within their hearts to come to a decision within themselves on what they want to take and what they want to leave so that is my long answer to your question Greg <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I agree with you, Michelle. And, you know, I think, too, that most of the people, there's been a really good, actually, response to both Greg's article and both our show. And then you'll get people that come on, and it's almost like they actually agree, and they accuse us of fear-mongering. But I have to wonder how much of the article have they actually read and let soak in. I would just really, really encourage people, take this opportunity to encourage people to at least read it through, let it sink in, listen to what's being said, read what's being said by Greg in his article. Okay, um, yeah, Stardust is energy. And what we're saying is, yes, no fear-mongering, but at the same time, you need to be aware of these things. People need to, you know, they need to wake up a little bit, actually. I mean, I hate to use that cliche, but it's so true. And it's not fear-mongering, it's awareness, because awareness is power. You know, when I when I go to bed, I often ask myself, and I've I've told Michelle this, have have I done everything I could, everything I could do today? And when I do my life review, I know in my heart that releasing that article was in humanity's best interest. That was the right thing to do. If it saves one soul, it was the right thing to do. If it helps ten people, it was worth it. You know, and then for these people just to come on and start bashing me for fear mongering, yeah, everything I do is always in humanity's best interest. And the, the analogy I used was like, it's like you're scolding a child; it hurts you as much yeah. as it's it's hurting them, and you feel equally as bad. And that's how I felt about even thinking about writing this article, let let alone releasing it. And uh, you know it. I know, I know that you guys are feeling that global empathy of what's about to, to occur, and I know there's many light workers out there that feel the same thing. There's a sadness in your soul. This is probably what it is that you're feeling. I would agree. And if you look around the planet, um, and you know about the process of death, and I believe it was Elizabeth Kubler-Ross that talked about death, there is um, a transition period that starts way before a, a person's body dies and they start uh, transitioning more on the other side. They take more of their essence out of their body as they move towards death, even if they don't realize it. And I think if you look around the planet, you see a lot of people walking around with almost no soul whatsoever. And I think those are the people that we're talking about here. You know, they know that they have um, trapped themselves in this incarnation cycle over and over and haven't haven't been able to wake up and there's no judgment against these people this was part of the experience they served creator just as much as we did it's just that um, you know we were able to break free of whatever that you know kept them in the cycle and we need to move on and we need to help bring as many people as possible and it, there are souls that we already know that that they we can't help them, and that's not what what we're here to do. What we're here to do 
is to get the rest of our soul family that intended and knew that they were going to wake up that have been uh, definitely mind controlled and trapped in such density that they're they're just having such a hard time right now that get, believe me they are screaming for help inside they're unhappy they're fearful they know there's something really really wrong but they can't figure out what it is and I just don't know how to how to help them other than to put the information out there because you know when there's a block you, you can talk to somebody all day long but they can't hear you so there'll be something um, that'll happen in their life that will uh, be so undeniable you know another dark night of the soul that it will be another chance for them to snap out of it so to speak and they do have a lot of help from their guides but their guides can only do so much so um, you know we just put the information out there and you can just look around the planet right now and see that a lot of people have already started leaving their bodies yeah and you know the ironic thing is too, you guys is that most of these people that are even in a position to be able to read uh, a Greg's article or especially on Facebook to be able to hear what we have to say most of them fall into that category of already starting their awakening process at the very least so most of these people that are arguing or have a dispute with what's being said, it, it's just they haven't read the article and they haven't let it soak in yet. I mean, they are basically not who we're talking about here, I would think, the majority of them. I don't know. I mean, Greg, what do you think about that? Well, a lot of people um, are working on their spiritual progression. And to everyone out there that is, I, I, I commend you and I'm so proud of you. Um, please don't construe this as being fear-mongering at all. Um, I, I, my, my love for humanity is much greater than anything else and all I want to do is the right thing and by giving this message it's the right thing to do and uh, you know if you if you were if you were to put yourself in my position what would you do? Honestly ask yourselves that yeah. to those people who are listening. Mm -hmm. If you had the opportunity to save possibly billions of people and you knew some information that was coming out that was com confirmed by two different sources who don't know each other same exact information would you just sit on it or would you try to help as many people as possible and ask yourselves that honestly what would you do if you were if you were in my position and I think a lot of the fear comes from people really realizing that this is the this is true we you know they already knew that um, this process of, of what can be termed ascension, which is, in my opinion, ascension is raising your vibration to higher consciousness by going within. That's what that's what they're doing already. They're already by raising their vibration and going within and and raising their raising the consciousness of the planet and the vibration of the planet and the vibration of those around them just by being in their presence. Well, they realize though. That there may that their maybe their child or maybe their father or their mother is one of those souls that did not progress on the path, and they get they get fearful of the fact that they can't save them, and you know this is um, a pattern from past lives that we've carried over for for many times. You know, from Atlantis, we couldn't save many people from Atlantis because they would not hear us when we said we had oracles tell us that our city was going underwater and they they didn't want to leave they were fearful and they went down with it and you know it's the, we're in the same situation we're just living the cycle over again and this time we we came back from the future to shout it out to the you know on the rooftops you know don't <laughs> we're not going to let this happen again we're going to try to bring as many people out of their slumber as possible so Greg, um, I know that um, you have a little a little experience with coming back from the future. Would you mind telling our listeners about you know your experience with what you've been uh, told about you know who you are? Well, honestly, I, I really <laughs> wasn't prepared to tell that to people because it's kind of a okay. Sort of, yeah, but all right, well. Here it is anyway, well, and I, I know that somebody <laughs> out—I know somebody out there will relate to this. I had a dream 
gosh, it must must have been 2009, 2010 or so, that I had sent myself back from, I believe it was like 28 years from in, into the future, back into present time because humanity was failing, which is basically what this article is saying. Um, the global consciousness wasn't high enough the first time around that we did it, so I sent myself back in time to do even more, and it's quite possible that I said, okay, I'm, I need to meet these people like Michelle and Larry and get them on the team to help raise the global consciousness so we can all make it as a, as a global civilization. Now, it's funny because somebody asked me when I sent myself back in time, who are you? And my answer was, I'm a master copy of myself. So apparently I cloned myself to come back into present time to help raise consciousness. Well, so as as you can see, I mean, there's a passion when you know who you are. This is exactly what I was talking about in my other show. This is this message is about understanding who you are and what you came here to do. And we don't have time to mess around anymore with 3D mundane things. We have to move out of our comfort zone and into our roles here as light warriors there's just there's this is just a clarion call really and you know part of that is is completely moving out of fear of what other people are going to think about you or what other people are going to think about who you say you are or where you've been or make fun of you know the fact that you say that you come from the future because you know what we we that's what we're doing we're in the now and being in the now means bringing all aspects of our past and our future together in the now to change our reality and when we do that it affects the future and the past so we're bringing our consciousness into our awareness and more pieces of our um, of our soul than we have in any other incarnation. That's what we came here to do and to help other people realize that and and by affecting them with our light vibration, uh, I believe that, you know, that was that's part of our mission and just, you know, you built a database with so much information and in 5D has has so many pages that it can be absolutely overwhelming when you're first starting out and trying to find answers but there is a search button at the top right hand corner and you can just type in you know whatever you have an interest Anything. in and yeah and yeah. then just choose the articles from there so I understand your passion when you know who you are and you know what you came here to do and it I know how much it I know that you're an empath and I know that it bothers you to have people laugh at you or, or or argue you know something and I just want to encourage you that from now on we're just gonna put it out there when we get confirmation we're just gonna put it out there for thought and I'm going to continue to write those love and light articles but I'm also going to continue to address the, the issues that I feel like people need to hear mm -hmm. yeah I agree and on the spur of the moment to even if we have to there's no time to be stuck in 3d time and sometimes if we have to just go on the fly like this that's what we've got to do and you know as far as in 5d goes all the information that you, you'd ever want to know is there yes there's a lot to dissect there but like you were saying there's a search button and still the beauty of it is it's all in one spot I mean it's all in one spot there for the taking and free and I would and, and and free too and it's like it, it's almost too good to be true but it is true just like the way we feel our passion about our former lives and all these timelines that are merging right now with each other I mean that's what's happening this puzzle is coming together right now and I think people are feeling it and they have a little angst but you know we can't let that hold us back and we're not going to and you know people can take it for what it's worth in their own progression but we've got a mission to continue on this and do what we've got to do you guys and I know you both know that and I appreciate you two very much so I'll tell you, know, you I just have to out. the uh, a lot of people don't realize how much time we put into research now I helped Michelle get her website up and going and then brought her on with uh, N5D radio and beforehand she knew I, I would work 12 to 15 plus hours every day 
How many hours are you working, Michelle? 12 to 15 hours every day. How many hours? So I, I asked 12, Larry to, 12 to 15 here. Yeah. yeah. I, I asked Larry to be my co-host on the N5D radio show, and, and now, you know, we've corrupted him as well. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Mm -hmm. We have some more people to corrupt because – In a good this, way. Yeah. I mean, I really – I really – absolutely – and um, I really want to uh, I want to get into this into the article just for another few minutes, and okay. just wanted just wanted to say that um, a lot of people right now are intentionally being distracted from what is really important, and um, the the ones the people that uh, make the decision to awaken, okay, as long as they make they they woke up and they realize oh my gosh um, I'm on, I'm on a prison planet I'm being controlled um, they realize that everything that they've been taught is a lie on television they realize that our our government is not out to help us they're you know they're really here to control us and to siphon off all of our energy and they realize what energy vampires are and they make the free will choice to free themselves really that is what it's going to take for the doors to open, for them to get to where they want to be, and hopefully um, by the end, by 2023, when Pluto moves out of Capricorn, because I feel like astrology is really a, um, a measure for us in cycles, um, and it just lays everything out, in my opinion, on on date wise. And I don't like to really get into dates, but we do, we are able to to know what a full, what a new moon energy feels like. You, you know, this all occurred yesterday on the new moon energy which is when you create things and when you when you have new beginning and this all came at the time of the new moon so you know with when Pluto moves out of Capricorn in 2023 this earth is probably going to be a different place because Pluto's the destroyer and Pluto will have come in and done his job here and in order for um, us to move out of this um, domination and control that we're under it has to um, basically everything ha has to be destroyed the, the foundation of that's that our country was um, was hijacked from needs to needs to fall in order for us to be able to rebuild sometime between now and 2023 so just making the intention and you know calling out to uh, the universe calling out to your your guides and angels calling out to um, you know the higher aspects of yourself that you're ready to move forward opens the door and that you know that's a big part of it and you'll and you'll be led and you know you just follow your internal guidance that's the best advice I can give people right now as to what they can do but whatever you do don't have any fear that you're not doing enough mm -hmm. because just being here on this planet and waking up was the biggest step you could make I mean, there it was a huge people, step. There are some people that are here just holding the light. They're complete introverts, and they, they avoid people at all costs, And uh, but they're carrying this huge positive energy, and they're playing a, a, an amazing role. Some people don't have to do anything but just mm -hmm. carry the energy. That's right. It. Yeah, just be, just be in that moment, you know. And and when they're in stores or wherever they are, that energy reflects off of them. And just by them being there, they they don't even have a clue the impact that they're having on people. I mean, they may save somebody's life, or they may, I don't know, their energy may provoke some wisdom in somebody, mm -hmm. or or whatever, help them to awaken. So they're just here holding the light and. Yeah, they need to realize they don't have to sit there and do telekinesis for 18 hours a day to awaken or whatever. I mean, it's just really, it starts with being conscious of it and then going from there, you know? Mm -hmm. Now, there's, a, there's one point, though, that I forgot to mention, and I did do an addendum on that article. So if you go back to N5D and check out that article, you might mm -hmm. have to refresh your page, but scroll down to the bottom. There is an addendum. But I just remember there is something I forgot to put on there. That I'll add after this uh, this this uh, conversation. I was told by the source at the dog park today that your thoughts have a lot to do with what what might happen here in the new, near future. Um, if you're thinking consistently negative thoughts, like I want to kill this person or I, I need to beat this dog or whatever, you know, you're, if you're constantly thinking negative thoughts. 
that's going to be the, the, everything's getting recorded into the Akashic records. So even your thoughts and your emotions are going to play into this. Now that doesn't mean, and I asked her specifically about this because, as Michelle knows, I don't have a lot of tolerance for stupid drivers. So <laughs> I asked her, <laughs> I've heard the stories. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, I asked her. I said, "Hey, I get road rage, <laughs> and if I get upset at a driver, does that count?" And she goes, "No, it's not." pure intention. That's an isolated incident. But if you're constantly having these thoughts over and over again about doing malicious things to other people, you better turn it around right now. Okay? This is your chance. This is your opportunity. Yes, and I'd like to say that, you know, one of the arguments that, that these people are having is is focusing on something like this, is um, putting our energy into it, and that we're going to create it just because we're thinking it. And we are not. We are not thinking it. We are not sitting here um, manifesting this. We, you know, we can see this as a potential, um, as a potential in our future, and the message. And all we're doing is spreading it. It's no different than spreading information about the truth about 9-11 or the truth about chemtrails. Just because you spread information about chemtrails does not mean you're putting your energy into it to manifest it and to manifest you know, the depopulation of the planet because of it. So that's just, just really, um, in my opinion, it's immature spirituality. It's not responsible. And we're here to stand in our power and take responsibility and to be able to, to, to take information and know what to do with it and disseminate it without putting, you know, energy and manifestation into it. It's quite the opposite. How how did Creator know who Creator was unless it sent aspects out to mirror back experience? Okay, so how do we know what we don't want unless we know what the possibility of the future is? Mm -hmm. the, the, which would be the possibility of the future being that let's just arbitrary numbers. Let's just say if we didn't say anything about you know about people waking up and at least making an intention um, you know maybe a, a billion people would go and instead maybe now four billion or five billion or six people billion people could go I mean that's just what you know the possibility is that humanity will not make it humanity's not going to make it as a species if that's the possibility that was put out there to us mm -hmm. so it's because you know basically all those lifetimes they haven't done anything um, to move forward. I mean, you go through all the ages um, of the zodiac and you go through the dark ages and everything, and every time there was a chance. Um, which one of y'all can tell me how many times that that we came that we've been here? Is this the fifth the fifth time? To to I, when there was a chance for you know. It depends, you know. I I think the Maya and the the Maya and the Aztecs is either the fourth or the fifth world, depending on which one you're talking exactly. about. Exactly. Yeah, and I, I, I even so. heard people throw the number out there like seven or eight, but you know, four or five could be likely. And really, who knows? But I know it's probably been several times. You know, I mean, and this, you know, it, it's another chance we have here, and every all the signs point to this being our last chance to do it. You know, and look at the motives behind why we're sharing this information I would encourage people if they really question it okay we're not we're not getting wealthy off this we're not making any money we're not trying to draw anybody in I mean none of this is going on I mean we're just trying to share this new information that's come out and we can't sit on it and yet we're not telling the same old sto stale story over and over again about 9-11 we know about all that kind of doom and gloom and you know we're aware of that it's time to get past it and we are but we're sharing new information that is vital to get out there I mean at the risk of sounding arrogant this is more vital to get out there than the truth about 9-11 or whatever Watergate who the hell knows but I mean I just you know this is so vital to do and we'd almost be remiss not to be doing it you know mm -hmm. yesterday I made a comment on your one of your uh, Facebook pages Larry about the galactic warriors and I have an article on in 5d called are you a galactic warrior and Michelle also has an article on galactic warriors too on in 5d and uh, there are two groups of light workers that are distinct from one another but we're both on the same team yeah I reposted it to the big Pleiadians group and they it got a lot of great response so thank awesome. you for that but yeah oh, you're welcome you know you have the you have the love and light people whose energy is greatly appreciated appreciated and needed on this planet 
And you have the Galactic Warriors who fight in the name of light, who stand up for the little guy, who are out there as activists that have already, at least in the United States, made huge, huge changes in what we're seeing in the supermarkets, uh, the labeling of foods, GMOs, the removal of fluoride in the water, and so on and so forth. Now, some people will say, well, it doesn't matter. This is a hologram, and this is just an illusion. Well, if this is all an illusion, then feel free to eat GMOs and get vaccinated and drink fluoridated water and drink your aspartame soda. It's all an illusion, right? Well, fortunately, yeah. it's the galactic warriors who are, br who are bringing this awareness to those within this illusion. Uh, you know, I had the illusion of a stage 3 melanoma cancer on my back seven years ago, but, fortu but fortunately that, that illusion's over. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so... So, you know, it, if it's an illusion, well, we're all part of this illusion, and, you know, you, you just can't wish things away. But what that positive energy is doing with the love and light people is holding the energy for everyone else, and we, we greatly need that. So we're all working together, you know, and it's, it's okay to have differing opinions mm -hmm. on things. Like, what will happen to the soul in this situation? Who knows? Until we get there, we don't. Exactly. Really and exactly. as long as you're making your spiritual progressions, as long as even if you're treading water, you have nothing to worry about. And you ultimately have nothing to worry about anyway. That's true. Ultimately, you have nothing to worry about. And if you're if you're reading our articles or if you're listening to this broadcast, you have nothing to worry about for sure because you wouldn't be you wouldn't be listening to us if if there wasn't a vibrational resonance. Uh, to begin with, and the 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 last thing I wanted to you know to get out there, I've said this before, is you know we do have to come together as a group. The dark has um, the reason they've been so successful is because they've had a little bit of um, fourth dimensional or higher uh, technologies to be able to do mind control. But there's one thing's for sure: they've come together as a group with one goal in mind, and that's the total domination and control of the planet and depopulation to under to a manageable number of about 500,000 people. So if we can't you know, respect each other's opinion or, or respect each other's right to put information out there without bashing each other. How are we going to work together as a team when the economy collapses? How, how would we work together as a team if just, just by chance, if we did have um, a UFO landing on this planet? How would we work together if if we um, didn't have the truckers delivering food to the grocery stores anymore and we had to come together as a community? So it's about being a responsible individual and being in control of your thoughts and actions. And that that is what spiritual maturity is about. And I'm just encouraging everyone out there um, more than anything in realizing what you have to do with this article is have your spiritual maturity mm -hmm. and come from your heart. I you can't know, stress been, that enough. I've been saying this for years that once the bottom of the pyramid unites, which is all of us, the rest of it will collapse. What a lot of people don't realize is that at the highest levels of free masonry, their motto is ordo ab chao, which means order out of chaos. And if you look around the world, what's going on? This is how they control us. But once we all unite and get rid of any you know, nationalism, patriotism, racism, all that crap, and realize that we are one global community, and people are going to say, oh, now you're talking like a socialist or you're for the <laughs> new world order. <laughs> you, pink, you pinko, yeah, really, yeah. exactly. And you know, and borders, yeah. I mean, it's but the you borders know what? need to go, the racism needs to go, yeah. The New World Order could be probably the greatest thing if it was done with the right intention. You know, it's just three words, New World Order. Don't let it scare you. Imagine if everybody did was able to speak the same language, that we could communicate with each other, that we did have a council of elders that, that was our government that worked in humanity's best interest. Imagine that as being a New World Order instead of this crap exactly. that they're trying to push down our throat. It could and be a beautiful you know, thing. Greg, it's funny that you would mention that, Greg, because I always tell people, whether it's socialism, communism, capitalism, or any of those isms, okay, if, if greed wasn't a part of that, 
and tolerance was more there, um, all of those systems would be wonderful to govern by. But then again, in a society like that, we probably wouldn't need a system, period, in that mm -hmm. kind of the thought or realm. So you're absolutely right about the New World Order thing. I mean, if people came together and created that as a collective instead of we're being dominated into it, you know, it's a yin and a yang. And one's mm -hmm. great, one's not so great, you know? It could be a beautiful thing. It could be that the world could change in an instant if everybody around the world that wasn't part of the domination and control system came together. It would happen and it changed the world in an instant. Mm -hmm. if, we didn't pay, if we all didn't pay taxes tomorrow, if we all decided you know, not to vote for our next, you know, our next okay. leader and start a new, you know, vote on a council of elders like you said and to, um, to live our lives by universal law, to mm -hmm. expand our thought process Processes and to treat each other like we'd want to be treated and to understand the law of vibration and to understand how your negative thoughts goes into the collective noosphere and that uh, it affects all of humanity because we're all tied together. Exactly, and I just want to let everybody know too real quick as far as before any rumors get started that Greg is advocating the New World Order as they know it. That's not the case, so please listen to what <laughs> we're saying. We are not trying to suck everybody into the New World Order as they <laughs> conceive it, okay? Yeah, Let's if get anything, that right on the table right there. If anything, check out the YouTube video called Global Unity Project, What the World Needs Right Now, and it gives a bunch of of uh, solutions to everything that we know is wrong with this world and one of the one of the suggestions is the council of elders where we would have this council of elders that we would vote in I would volunteer for that just to start out and then you can vote on them every week every month whatever you decide on but the council of elders have to show that they're working in humanity's best interests the minute they stop working in humanity's best interests they're fired there's no more two-year terms or four-year terms or something like that the only criteria is you better be working in humanity's best interests and everything will be transparent you know imagine imagine you know well well greg what did you do this week well you know we worked on free energy uh we we were able to clear up the the lakes and waters in in five different states and we're working on seven other states next week we're going to do you know <laughs> mm -hmm. something along that line that that that's where we're heading well that, that's the kind of global and i don't want to use the word government but the council, the kind of council of elder that we need and as we know government means govern to control mente means mind to control the mind so we would want to get rid of that word completely yes well. i think i think uh to uh, to revamp our language system to revamp our education system everything mm -hmm. needs to be revamped to to take us out of the uh, the spelling of control and to turn it into positive vibrations and manifestation for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and empowerment exactly. And as and we're, we're Pluto entered Capricorn in 2008, and right on schedule we saw the collapse of the banking system, with the exception of the two big to fail jail banksters. And uh, right now we're seeing Kevin Annette doing his work. Uh, exposing the Roman Catholic Church for all their crimes against humanity. Uh, we're seeing revolutions going on across the globe against tyrannical and oppressive governments. This is what Pluto and Capricorn does. It tears down everything that is not in humanity's best interest and gives us the opportunity to rebuild it in our own best interest. So once again, yet another opportunity is here for people. And we can make this, you know, the proverbial you know garden of eden if you want or the you know the, the the next golden age we can make this whatever we want but it all has to collapse beforehand and it's collapsing right before your eyes now there's a lot of people that are probably so ensconced within their television watching schedule or who's you know the whether the yankees or rangers won or whatever yeah. you know that stuff really doesn't matter and when you do your life yeah. review do you really want to see yourself sitting in front of a TV with a, a remote control in your hand. Is that the life review you really want to see? Yeah, getting stressed out by a sports score, which, you know, I did that for 30 years. Yeah, I, I don't want to spend any more time doing that And exactly. And it's like since the awakening, I really just don't even care. It's hard to force myself to even get excited about the NBA Finals or the Super Bowl. And I think mm -hmm. that, 
you know, we're just focusing on this now. And you mentioned Kevin Annette, you know, and he's playing his role and he does a, he does a damn good job at what he does and, mm -hmm. you know, getting the information out there and going for what he's doing. And it takes people like that on all fronts of this. I don't even want to use the word movement because, you know, like government, you get into that a movement. It makes me think of, I don't know, some college protest movement in the 60s that was just more of a, a word to use. But you've got people doing this on all fronts. And it's just wonderful to see, and we all have. We need to respect each other and understand that, you know, we all have a role to play, and we're all just as equally as important as each other, and give each other the love and the respect to do that, you know. Well, I'd like to mention that George Soros just sold all of his shares of Citigroup, Bank of America, and J.P. Morgan, and he's he's a, from what I understand, he's a pretty big shareholder in that, and mm -hmm. whether it's meant to spark the demise of the banking. You know what they do want is for the whole system to collapse, and that's mm -hmm. how we know it will collapse. But they they want to come in to um, to to uh, instigate to uh, to tell everybody, okay, now it's time for a one world currency, and which is part of the new world order. Which you know, one world currency wouldn't even be bad if it was based on energy exchange, yeah. but not as the part of the plan of the of the of what they have they have planned as well so w it is happening right in front of our eyes and um, that's that's why we need to be informed on what's going on it's not about fear-mongering it's about information information is power and power will take away the fear and, and that's look what at the intention too sorry Greg but look at the intention I behind it too I mean exactly like the one world currency when you've got it done in a loving giving way with that intention it's perfect but when it's for control measures and hidden agendas it's another story altogether the yin and the yang with everything and I would just encourage people to look at the undertones to everything and you know that's basically what I had to say about it yeah Greg sorry go ahead that's okay you know I, I, I often ask people if there was no such thing as money what would you be doing with your life you know and it gives you a great idea of where your life path should be I also ask them if a UFO were to land in your backyard do you think that the ET would have a Bible or money and chances <laughs> are no they, they wouldn't have either so this is where we're heading and we're, we are eventually going to be heading to a world without money where everyone can live in abundance but there will be a transition period and what we're looking at right now we know that the Roman Catholic Church has enough net worth to feed clothe and shelter everybody on this planet and of course I ask people so why is there starvation and homelessness if they're not living by the word, word of the Bible? But what will happen is the, the Roman Catholic Church will collapse under Pluto and Capricorn, and their net worth will be distributed amongst everybody on the planet. There will be a transition period where everybody will have abundance with money, but that's only a transition period until we transition out of money, which is the next stage of development for this planet. Um, so. You know, as for the monetary concerns, yeah, we live in a third dimensional reality where we do have the almighty dollar and uh, we have to abide by certain rules, but it's crumbling. Be, be assured that it is crumbling. There will be peace and abundance for everyone down the road. Um, it's just, it, it, but it all needs to collapse first. Absolutely. Stay out of fear. Get out of your head and into your heart. Do, mm -hmm. your, do your own work. Um, stay grounded to the earth. Um, you know, bring in that, bring those energies. Ask your guides to help bring those pulses of energies that we've heard about coming from our galactic central sun into the sun and into our bodies that help raise our vibration. Do things that make you happy and follow your intuition. Go with your gut. Don't don't listen to other people like us. You, you can run these things through your heart and you can decide for yourself mm -hmm. what direction you need to take. You know, everybody on this planet, if Greg and I would be sitting next to each other looking out at the beach, I would see a whole different picture out of my eyes than he sees out of his eyes. And that's what people seem to forget. Is there is right now, there is no right or wrong. It's what works and what doesn't work. And... Um, everybody's got their own opinion and their own way of seeing things and we have to learn to, to have respect for each other and that's how we're going to work together and move forward so and their own things to contribute and things like that and 
Greg, if I could just touch with you again, when when you when we were on the first show with you on Cosmic Awakening, you were talking about the Pluto and the Capricorn thing and the mm -hmm. the money distribution, and it really resonated with me for the first time hearing something like that because I'm so used to hearing this word Nasara out there, and you know, it's mm -hmm. I have no judgment one way or the other on Nasara. I do, but it almost seems like okay, it's been talked about forever and ever and ever and ever, and it almost seems like more like it's a catchphrase mm -hmm. and a catch philosophy within this system but then what you were touching upon really tied this together about the distribute distribution of abundance during the transition phase so mm -hmm. um, are you talking about Nasara or something no. different than no, that? Okay. No, I, I, I followed Nasara for the longest time and to me it's a bunch of hot air and BS the same rhetoric is being used over and over and over again there's always delays on why it's not happening and this and that and <laughs> You know, I've had it with it. You know, I, I, you know, to me, I've, I've tried weighing it out, and when I look inside and use my own, dis own discernment, it's hot air and bullshit. And you know, I can't. Yeah, I agree I, with you. You know, and yeah, I am judging. And I am judging I'm, too. And at the same time, <laughs> hell, if we were wrong, if we, you know what? And if we were wrong, wrong, hell, it'd be a great thing too. I would love to be wrong on it, but. I mean, we we got to look at it like, okay, let's be real about it, and you know, when it happens, it'll happen. And that's not to say something like that won't, because it is coming. But when you hear a catchphrase, people get more caught up in that word, mm -hmm. I think, than even what's behind it. And yeah, I agree with you to, too. It doesn't resonate with me, but hell, I'd love to be wrong. They've been talking about this since the what the the Clinton uh, era, uh, Bill Clinton, since he was in uh, a president. They've been talking about Nasara, so. Yeah, well, what, what, really what's happened? Nothing. Yeah, yeah. So we're going into two decades, I mean, almost three decades of talking of that being bantered about, mm -hmm. huh? Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, I think some people might always, might also, there's so much disinformation out there that they might actually get Nasara mixed up with the fact that the Vatican has enough money to f clothe and feed everyone in the world and you know Nassara was I think based on the Saint Germain fund and you know is, is that the same thing as the Vatican fund who knows I think that our ling linguistics on this planet is what's keeping us apart I think it was control it was created to to control and keep us in in this kind of confusion mm -hmm. so you know w all we can do is just put information out there as to what we think would be the solution and that is that the everything has to collapse and that um, if you just think about it if we took the money from the Vatican we the people and fed and clothed everybody on the planet and, and and got through that part and continued to work on ourselves and continue to help um, help our brothers and sisters that's that's the best thing that we can do as we move through these changes yeah these so are the phases we focus yeah. focus on 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 helping people rather than the terminology of what things are called. Beautiful. Yeah. No, I agree with that. That's beautifully put, Michelle, definitely. I mean, we just need to think about that because it's so simple when we put it like that instead of getting hung up on a term or a name or who said this or who said what. I mean, it just go within and absorb it, you know? Yeah. Well, it's all well, part of the it's all part of the transition process. We're already going through it right now, but you know, if you're listening to the mainstream media, they're going to be the last ones to tell you about what's going on right now. I, I highly suggest, if you don't already, visit in 5D news. There's a news link on the top there, and I post every day, 365 days a year, all of the alternative news for that particular day, including. Uh, the latest horoscope readings from Tom Lesher and uh, Carl Boudreau, Kelly Rosano, um, all your favorite astrologers, they're, they're always on there too. This, that's the first place I post it, even before I post it on the N5D Facebook wall. So uh, check that out. It'll keep you up to date with what's going on with the news that they fail to report. And uh, this is there's a lot of information that, that's coming out right now that you're not going to hear on the mainstream media. And it, it is all collapsing. We are in that transition period. And I, you know, if you're em, if you're an empath like me and don't like to put your attention or focus on the things that are going on because you pretty much know what's happening, um, I think it's a really good time if if you're if you're not wanting to focus on current activities other than you know special news announcements like the ones that we bring forth, you know, just just spend time with yourself and spend time loving yourself. 
and uh, determining what it is that you feel like that you're here to do and make a game plan on how you can move forward into the new energies of being who you are and fo and following you know following your mission because the one thing if you think about um, people who have had near-death experiences that have a life review and they come back and they're a totally changed person because they realize that every little thing that you do affects another person that is that's in your life and if you had the chance to feel what it feels like to be on the receiving end to some kind of scathing comment on Facebook you would have you would never do that again if you had the opportunity to have a review and feel that emotion and come back into your into your body it would certainly change you so and conversely I, and conversely too the good deeds that you do just opening up the door for an elderly citizen the gratitude that 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 senior citizen will feel you get to Absolutely. feel in your life review so yeah, you know you, you do things out of the kindness of your heart and with good intentions but you know you, you don't do it for the accolades you'll get those accolades down the road and during your life review when you see your, when you relive that moment in your life where you helped somebody else absolutely and if you think about it we are actually kind of looking into the future by doing that and bringing it into the now. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't have to wait for for a near death experience or no. or to die. We have we don't we don't have any more time to do that. This is this is it. So it, that's what this article is about. You mm -hmm. know, this is it. Act as if this was. No matter if you really want to believe it or if it's true or not, act as if this was it. This is our last chance. We're not allowed to come back anymore from the future, or we're not allowed to do any timeline manipulations anymore. We're, this we have to play it out as it is, and this is the final chapter. Mm -hmm. And so let's make the very best of it. And every day that you wake up, make an intention to do everything you can for yourself, and everything you can for humanity, everything you can for the planet, and everything you can for the the galaxy and the universe and beyond because everything we do right now affects all the way out through the cosmos not it's only a vibrational that, Michelle, frequency not only that but do it from the heart do it as if you don't expect anything in return give without any expectations of receiving do it with love and there is absolutely no doubt in my mind that love is the answer to everything that we're going through right now and you can't go wrong even if you don't want to believe anything that anybody says as long as you are love that you that you are emitting love and you're making decisions from your heart you can't go wrong period and that's that why, is that's the main message of any bible that you read you know, and that's why we all work so many hours every day of the year, 365 days of the year. We're working, you know, 12 to 15 hours plus every day for our love for humanity, for no other reason. For no other that's reason. It. For you my love for, for you, for my love for Larry, and for my love for all those people that I've ever even met. Because mm -hmm. that's how we change this world. We send our vibration of love out to humanity, and it is received in more ways that we cannot see. It raises the vibration of the people, and that's how they awaken. It's all one big, beautiful plan, and we're doing it. And we're not here. We don't want. We're not. We're not. We don't want to be leaders where people want to follow us. That's the last thing we want. Greg being the introvert, I think he set himself up for that just to make sure that his ego isn't going to take over mm -hmm. because he doesn't want to be in the spotlight. He's no. doing it out of his heart and he's pushing people like me and Larry forward to, you exactly. know, to spread the messages and I don't want to do it either. It but yeah. Larry and I finally came out of our shell and and we know that that we have the voice and we have the personality that we chose the bodies that we came into whether it be from birth or whether it be as a, as a, as a walk-in or whether it be from guidance from our guides we chose this body this voice this personality because we knew that we needed these tools to do the job and I'm just um, just want to send my love out to everybody out there if you need to get a hold of Larry you can do so um, on his Facebook page um, 
why don't you give everybody uh, again, Larry, repeat uh, how they can find you on Facebook. Okay, let me go through the script real quick. I'll do, I'll do it quick because everybody's heard it a bunch lately. So, okay, you can find me at the Fringe Thinkers. Uh, that's my personal Facebook group. It's not French. It's Fringe Thinkers. You can also find me on the Big Pleiadians group, almost 25,000 strong, as well as a ton of other regional Pleiadian groups that I've created, about 17 of them now. And Mr. Prescott, where can we find you? Well, you can find me on the French Thinkers. That's F R E N. No. <laughs> like French toast? Yeah, well, then, now somebody's going to create a, a Facebook group called the French Thinkers. French Thinkers. <laughs> you your picture well, and French me. toast on there. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. Well, yeah, you can find me, obviously, on n5d.com, n5d.net, body, mind, soul, spirit.com. HolisticCancerResearch.com. I could go on and on. Uh, the N5D Facebook page, the Body, Mind, Soul, Spirit Facebook page. Um, also, I do want to close to that. In my sincerest hope, I hope that this information is wrong about souls possibly ending. I, I, I truly do hope that that's wrong. I hope that everybody has a chance, no matter how many times you have to come back and relearn I hope that they, they truly do have that one, one more chance, ten more chances, however mo many more chances it takes to make that spiritual progression. So that's, that's where I stand on this, but I had to put that information out there regardless of what I thought and how it appears to people when they read it. Well, and I believe, exactly. I believe that the one way that we can make it wrong is to help awaken every person on this planet that isn't part of the dark cabal and bring them forward with us. Mm-hmm. So that's that's my goal, and I'm whether it's um, you know whether the future says it's achievable is not. I'm not going to give up, and mm -hmm. I know you're not, and I know Larry's not. And if you if you need to reach Greg, you can send him a message on the N5D Facebook page. And you um, as well. That's, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I'm the ad. I'm an admin on that page as well, and. Um, and if you need to reach me, you can reach me at michellewalling.com. Or you can reach me at cosmicstarseeds.com, um, and you can also reach me um, on the Cosmic Awakening Show page, where Larry and I have a radio show every Thursday night, and at eight o'clock um, Eastern Daylight Time. And Larry, uh, I'm sorry, Greg also has his radio show um, on N5D. Radio mm -hmm. and that's Monday nights at seven o'clock. Eight, yeah, seven seven, 7 p.m. Eastern, yep. Eastern Standard Time. And Michelle, and, uh, you forgot to mention your uh, Facebook Cosmic uh, Starseeds Facebook page. Oh, okay. <laughs> CosmicStarseeds.net, right? Um, no, no, her Facebook page. The, the Facebook page you just simply oh, type in yes. Cosmic. Yeah, you just simply type mm -hmm. type in Cosmic Starseeds. What a great so, name! I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Who came up with that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Greg pulled it out of the ether. <laughs> so, Greg, I want to thank you for coming on today and following yes, up you. with the new information that you had My from, pleasure. from your sources. It seems like her guides did their <laughs> jobs in coming through to her and mm -hmm. then coming to you, and you shared it with me, and I shared it with Larry, and uh, from there uh, we kind of uh, went wild. Well, and I, from and there, look, we, we all shared it with love to the listeners, honestly. Mm -hmm. And I look forward to doing this many times in the future. Me too. Me as well. Okay. Well, thank you Very so much, guys. Greg, it's been a pleasure, and Michelle, it's been a pleasure, and thank you so much. And I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up now, and let's right, get ready guys. for the, the love and the heartaches to come. Here we go. <laughs> thank <laughs> you so much. Bye-bye. Namaste, guys. <laughs>